good job here, Janice. I'm glad you're thinking safety first and wearing the correct personal protective equipment as an example. Thanks, Mr. Bean. You know, you should be wearing the correct PPE as well while conducting your inspections at the workstations, too. Well, uh, I'm only going to be around the work areas for a second or so, so I just figured... No, 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 Todd. Uh, that, that's not right. Remember, Jim, as a supervisor concerned with safety, you have to lead by example. See, you should come into the work area with all the PPE that the company requires the employees to wear. It's... When the other employee sees you wearing the protective equipment, then the subject of safety will become non-negotiable. Yes, uh, right, but I, I thought you said that the first-line employees should have total buy-in and ownership of the safety program. Well, they should, but remember, this can only be achieved with the full endorsement and support from the employee's first-line supervisor. Correct. Oh. So you, as a supervisor, must provide a work environment that not only talks safety, but really, you know, lives. Safety, Jim. So that's why the supervisor should lead by example. Right. Now, as a supervisor on the job, you must expect and demand safety in every task that your employees are responsible for. See, you, Jim, are the liaison between employees and the company's management system, as, as well as uh, uh, all the government regulatory agencies and coworkers. So let's try it again, people. All right, everybody out. Right on the set. Supervising safety, take two. And action. So keep up the good work here, Janice. It's good to see you following the safety policies, procedures, and guidelines that are in place here on site. I know the company's commitment toward safety is serious. All the safety practices here in place reflect the expectations of the company to provide a safe working environment like requiring you to wear appropriate personal protective equipment and knowing how to use it. Right. Be sure not to slow down your production results, though, from all these safety concerns. I, oh, no, I no, 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 cut, cut. But now, <laughs> you, as a supervisor, have uh, the daunting task of balancing company objectives to achieve the production results from your employees while, you know, not compromising safety. See, all of the hard work that produces results is always overshadowed by an accident. But results achieved without an accident sometimes go unnoticed. Yeah, and that's why it's up to you and the role of the supervisor to be certain that your employees are recognized for their safety achievements in, you know, every phase of the job. Recognition should be rewarded during the planning stage of the job, while the job is being executed, and, of course, after completing the job accident-free and in compliance with company and regulatory compliance. Well, what would be another way to communicate safety to employees? Jim, uh, just simply talk safety. Talk safety? Make a habit of telling employees that you notice their safe work habits and when they're following proper procedures. Or uh, tell employees that you appreciate when they point out a possible safety hazard and correct it. Um, and encourage employees to ask questions. Oh, yes. I believe the quote from another safety film was, the worst question is the one that did not get asked. Yeah. Uh, right. That's, uh, that's good, Jim. Now, uh, let, let's try it again. Quiet on the set! Supervising safety, take three. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, Jim. Well, what's my motivation as a supervisor concerned about safety? Motivate others to, for safety. Huh? Ask employees for their help. See, Jim, most people like to give help because it makes them feel good and know that they are needed. Right, Janice? Mm -hmm. Okay. See, praise is a powerful tool to motivate for a safe behavior, and be sure your praise is sincere. Uh, also, try to keep your praise separate from criticism. So you're saying that most people are likely to remember the criticism and assume that the praise was thrown in to make the criticism sound more positive? Yes, exactly. And, and be sure to be specific when giving praise. Uh, for example, you might want to say, uh, congratulations for a job well done. Um, I noticed everyone was properly trained prior to the startup of the job. Uh, everyone followed uh, company procedures, and the correct personal protective equipment was used. Uh, remember, though, to be able to say all of these observations as a supervisor, you must have a plan uh, of your own to observe them. Well, what about criticism? 
Well, criticism also has its place. When an adjustment needs to be made, it is up to you as a supervisor to bring it to the attention of those in need. Oh, but before you place blame for a job not conducted properly, make sure the system is not causing the problem. Most people will work in a system that they understand, but sometimes awareness and training are all that's needed, and giving the employee the opportunity to share in solving the problem gives them ownership of the solution. So, safety has an inherent reward for everyone. Right. Uh, however, if the reward is not recognized or pointed out, safe behavior is taken for granted, which may allow unsafe behavior to be accepted and uh, not challenged. So, make a game plan for everyone to share in the reward. Yes. Yes. Now, now you have the idea. Let's go for another take. All right. Quiet on the set. Supervising safety. Take four. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Excuse me. Um, yes. Yes, Jim, what is it? How do I come up with a game plan for what I want to get accomplished? Jim, be a leader for safety. See, chances are most of your employees are looking to you as a supervisor to come up with what needs to get done, when will the change occur, and how their job needs to change with new opportunities. Sometimes the best safety programs are lost over a period of time because safety wasn't figured into the long-term plan. Well, what else? get the employees involved. The, the key to improving any accident record is to improve on the performance of those having accidents. What guidelines can I keep in mind as a supervisor to improve the safety performance of employees? Set a goal to have no accidents. Uh, acting supervisors must change their values to, to not accept accidents as a normal occurrence. Next to this set objectives that will improve work habits. Yeah, so these objectives may include design, maintenance, and procedures used in the work environment, and they must have the full participation of the supervisor. As a supervisor, you must set up steps to be taken by all employees during work activities to achieve the goal of no accident. What kind of steps? What did you tell them, J.B.? One, make safety a daily concern. Talk safety to at least one member of your work group every day. Two, be consistent in the enforcement of all safety rules and be fair in applying discipline. Three, be alert to any unsafe practices and unsafe conditions. The attitude of the employees will reflect accordingly to your action or indifference to known safety hazards. Four, given all of your employees involved in the safety program, their participation is key to the success of the safety program. Expect them to participate in safety meetings, inspections, and other safety activities. Five, hold everyone under your supervision accountable for their safety performance, as well as their co-workers. Just as you would hold them accountable for production rates, cost effectiveness, and other traditional performance measures. Place safety performance on top of that list. And finally, step six, insist on prompt reporting of all accidents and near misses. So this will place importance on areas meeting development and point out your safety priority as supervisor and management. So all of these steps are necessary in justifying a supervisory safety program? Yes. Look at the results. Results? Tell them, JB. Okay. See, one, no accidents means no injury, illness, or property damage. By working toward this goal, many value-added aspects can be achieved for the entire organization. Number two, insurance costs can be reduced through less premiums for workers' compensation, casualty, and business interruption. The amount of dollars associated with producing a revenue should be correlated to the cost savings realized by premium reduction. Three, employee morale is related to the level of safety in their jobs which relates to the level of productivity. Safety is an employee benefit, and not all companies have the same level. Number four, training an employee to be safe in their work habits allows an employee to be more efficient and productive. And five, a committed supervisor towards safety will be a committed supervisor to a good management system overall. And finally, number six, regulatory compliance will be easier to accomplish with a safety committed management and employees. Thank you. Now, can we please shoot another take? Oh, absolutely. Good. All right. 
Oh, uh, but before we begin, uh, let me just rethink what I've retained about the supervisor's role in safety. Of course. Okay, go ahead. So, my role as the first-line supervisor has a greater impact on the day-to-day -day activities of my employees than anyone else. I must believe in the safety program and demonstrate my belief through leading by example. Day-to-day -day decisions of balancing work objectives with working safely is a burden that a supervisor must accept to ensure a proper balance. Now, motivation is a powerful tool to use in the safety program. As a supervisor, you're constantly striving to influence the behavior and work habits of your employees. Praise should be given when a safety behavior is observed, and criticism for positive change is sometimes needed. I see. Um, yeah. Be a leader in safety. Most employees are looking to the supervisor for the answers. Make the employees part of a game plan, and they'll feel a sense of accomplishment, which will lead to a continuation of success. Set a goal for no accidents and set specific objectives to accomplish this goal. And uh, know what you want to accomplish as a supervisor and measure your success. This may be through improvement of an accident record, a reduction of insurance premiums, improved employee morale, or having a sense of accomplishment and pride for providing a safe workplace for employees. Yes, that's uh, very nice. Is there anything else you'd like to reflect on? No, I, I think that'll about do it. All right. Let's put one in the can. Uh, make up! Supervising safety, take five. And action! Well, Janice, it looks like you're doing a fine job of promoting safety on the job. Can I get my close up now? Oh, God! What are you doing? We have a we're burning place here. We've shown a variety of workplaces and situations this month. We'd like to remind you that each workplace is different. Be sure to wear the personal protective equipment that's right for your job. For more information about Safety Watch, give us a call at 800 440 0377. From all of us here at Safety Watch, work smart, stay safe, and thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.